some of you know that last year um, we purchased a, a building, the San Francisco Gay Men's Course first home and the country's first national LGBTQ center for the arts. And this February, we were launching our programming in the building. So excited. It was just, it was, uh, you know, it was revolutionary to be able to have a space for the chorus and a space to launch programming for our community. And because of what we're all, trans uh, what is transpiring at the moment and what we're all going through with COVID and the coronavirus, um, we had to shut down the center and shut down all of the programming. So, of course, as things happen and Tim and I are, are, are uh, you know, sort of brainstorming, what can we do? We thought, well, why not take our new series, Behind the Curtain, online and call up our favorite friends and just sort of sit back and have a conversation with them and chat with them about how they're getting through the virus, um, what they're doing with their families, but also just go behind their curtain and talk about their lives and careers and get to know them a little bit better. Right. That's the premise of Behind the Curtain online. Tim? Uh, forevermore, our very first Behind the Curtain live on SFGMC TV. People, put your hands together for Laura Benanti. Hey! <laughs> what are you doing in Jersey right now, Laura? Yeah, what are you doing in Jersey? Ooh. Yeah, I mean, look, my only, um, in times of crisis, I have two settings. I have like burrowing down into a hole and never coming out, or I have like supercharged um, being of service. Mm. And since with a three-year-old, I have zero ability to burrow. I, you know, I get like five hours of sleep a night. Um, I'm like really trying to be of service. So I launched a social media campaign. The hashtag is sunshine songs. Yeah. Um, where I encouraged young people whose um, musicals were canceled, their school musicals were canceled to please um, tag me, their posts of them singing and performing. And now and, the and it's huge and it's gone huge. viral and they're having so much fun with it. it. They are. What a brilliant idea. And the video, the original post, which I did not know was going to go viral or I would have slapped some makeup on my face. Um, <laughs> has been seen almost 4 million times. Oh We've my had wow. 5,000 submissions. And now my friend, Kate Dieter Meriday and I, she is um, a mediator down South. She and I are starting an initiative for uh, hospitals and senior centers. And for anyone who's isolated, who's not on social media, that they can receive what is essentially like an email newsletter where all they have to do is click a link and there'll be curated virtual variety show for them. So we're going to be launching wow. that, like, actually today. Um, I'm going to post the video saying anybody who wants to submit um, their video to be, um, you know, turned into a virtual variety show, we're going to disseminate it to people who really need it right now who don't have social wow. media. That is so brilliant. Yeah. Really, really. Thank, thank and thank you. Yeah. I think it's really important to be in a state of gratitude uh, uh, right now. And so thank you for doing that. And thank you for taking care of our first responders and our healthcare workers. It's really important. Yeah, yeah I mean, every morning and every night I do my gratitude list because, man, I do not wake up in gratitude. I wake up in tears. I wake up scared. Yeah. I wake up wondering what world is my daughter is going to yeah. be living in and that we're all right going to be living in. So it's like I have to immediately shift my perspective and lean toward the light. Otherwise, the darkness is just so overwhelming. And um, I actually have an album coming out. My first studio album is coming out in June. And our first single is being released April 10th. And 100% of my earnings from that single is going to go to an organization called Food Corps. Oh and right now they're working full time to feed children who rely on school for the majority of their nutrition. Um, wow. So that single comes out April 10th and it's accompanied by a music video that I'm really excited for you guys to see. I know that you're going to love it. It's highlighting, you know, how we're all dealing at home um, wow. with a special emphasis on our first responders and people who are out there being of service. And, you know, what's, what's it's the hard. Recording? What's the um, so the album is going to be self-titled. So it's just going to be Laura Benanti because it's my first studio recording. Sure. But our first single, probably I'm not allowed to say because okay. <laughs> it's coming out April no. 10th. But, um, you'll see, April 10th is right just around the corner. But, it you know, it's really important to me that people know that 100% of my earnings will be going to Food Corps. You know, that it's not like a money-making endeavor by any means. So we, we do what you do. 
the chorus does what you do, and that is okay. activism through music yep. or music through activism. I mean, they are so inextricably combined that we we could never separate the two. Yep. So my question for you, Laura, is you've been this way your whole life. Yes. How did that happen? What what, what set you on a path where everything you do is mission oriented, not just about you? I, since I was a young person, have had a real um, strong reaction to injustice. Um, and I don't know where that necessarily comes from. Um, I do think part of it was, you know, my uncle Bob, who is so dear to me, who, um, you know, passed away and he was one of the founding members of the Gay Men's Chorus of Washington, D.C. Um, when I would speak about him and his partner to my friends, their reaction, like when I was young, some of their reactions were so horrified that I was sort of exposed to that feeling of like, whoa, what are you, what are you even talking about pretty early on? Um, and it, I just wouldn't, I just couldn't tolerate it. Right. <laughs> you know, I just don't have a really high tolerance for injustice. Yeah. So it makes me so angry. And that is the part I have to work on. Like that's the personal part that I have to, because anger does nothing but feed me poison, which is just going to be bad for me. Right. And it changes nothing. So for me, I have to shift my feelings of straight rage, <laughs> just straight up rage into affecting change. Otherwise, I feel like I'll be eaten from the inside out. Is um, your uncle on your mother's side or your father's side? My mother's, my, mother's. my mom's brother, my mom's older brother. And did you know, uh, when, how, when did you know he was gay? What, what was the, that? I mean, from the minute, I don't remember not knowing. You know, I, I don't remember a time of not knowing. He had a long-term partner who I knew they loved each other and were in love and then didn't hide it. And, and so I, I just didn't, like, it never crossed my mind. And it's funny, my, one time when we were, we were have a house in, in Delaware and we were all there, my, my grandmother, my, my family, my uncle Bob and his, his then partner. And my sister was like four. And my grandmother said, his, my uncle Bob's mother said, will you please go upstairs and get uncle Bob and his friend? And Ella said, and, and Mary Ella said, they're not friends. They're in love. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, yeah. I mean, you have to give credit to your family. Totally. I, mean, because, I mean, you were brought into this and with the acceptance of all the family. So to you, that was yeah. completely natural. Yeah. And so many children don't have that. They have to find that later. So I understand that um, is where you learn to be accepting. Where did you learn this empathy? Hmm. My mother is an extremely empathetic person. Extremely. I don't know if that's a learned behavior or um, I don't know if it's nature or nurture. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, it's got to be both, but I can I, I absolutely guarantee you if it's not nurtured, it dies. Absolutely. 100%. People, young, I think that's young children, I think, I think young children are empathetic. I mean, yes. they, they know to share. There's something in them that shares. Um, and then when they don't, um, if that's encouraged, uh, I think empathy dies. Uh, yeah. So I think it's both. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And I think some of us are born more sensitive than others. And it's funny. It's like I know a lot of sensitive people who are very sensitive about themselves, but not to others. No kidding. And that's, that's a bummer. You yeah. know, and that's something for me that's a journey where I'm like, I can't expect people to behave like I want them to. Yeah. You know, all I can, the only thing I can do is, is the only thing I have control over is my own behavior. Yeah. Um, but it's funny. I think that's one of the reasons why we connected so instantly is that we are cut from the same cloth. Right. Absolutely. You know, well, we're just yeah. like of yeah. the same. Yeah. And we're both a little average. insane, just a little. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Off. yeah. So tell us a little bit about Singing You Home. Thank you for asking about it. So Singing You Home was um, an album that I co-produced with my friend Mary Mitchell Campbell and my other friend Lynn Pinto. And um, it's a dual language um, children's album. So all the songs are in Spanish and in English and 100% of the proceeds of the album go to help reunite families separated at the border, um, which right now is obviously a, a huge issue as yeah. if the coronavirus 
spreads throughout these camps, it's a death sentence. These people will, they die. will not be. Yeah. 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 In the most horrific way. So, okay. you know, pardon me. How can, how can people support? Um, they can, they can buy the album on iTunes or Amazon or ghostlightrecords.com. Anywhere that digital music is sold, they can buy. It's called Singing You Home, which is an original song that Jason Robert Brown wrote and Audra McDonald sang on our album. But it's just full of incredible people. Lin-Manuel Miranda, Mandy Gonzalez, Cynthia Arrivo, Audra McDonald, um, Adina Menzel and Josh Groban. Hmm. Um, who else? Anna Villafanye and Ingrid Michaelson. Well, actually, Kristen there, actually, there is no one else. You've just named them all. They're, it's all of them. Yeah. It's all of them. Yeah. And so, I, you know, literally every single person involved with the making of this album took zero dollars, including the musicians, which is unheard of with their union. Right. And it, it was just, a you know, a bunch of really kind hearted activists, musicians who said, we have to do something. We cannot put children in cages and separate them indefinitely from their parents. It's, it's just has felt to me like since 2016, we have been on this downward spiral. And there's a part of me just that just feels like God or the universe or whatever you want to call it has said to us, like, go to your rooms, mm -hmm. go inside your houses, mm -hmm. think about what you've done and you will come out when you can treat each other like human beings again, but you don't get to be around each other if you're going to keep doing this. And that's the only thing I can think of that makes any sense wow. to me wow. Where this is God's time out. It's beautiful. You know, and like we have an opportunity to turn this into a lesson and we can come out of it stronger, closer, more connected, more willing to do what is right. What is best, what is true where we can say we no longer accept lies. You know, we no longer accept misinformation as news. Like we have an opportunity here to really rise up. And I, I just, I hope that we do. Yeah, because we were too busy before. Yes. We accepted all of that. Uh, Chris yeah. and I talk about, even, even with the, the center, um, not just doing busy points, just not yeah. collecting busy points. What's that about? Right. And we were all wrapped up in it. And I, yeah. I absolutely love what you said. So, Laura, you do know that you are uh, the you're the magnet that all these people are attracted to. You are, and um, it's not an accident that all of those people are involved with you, and that people love you so much. Your your life as a singer is exemplary. Are you kidding? Uh, it's amazing, but. Everyone that I know and I talk to and that I hear talk about you, it's the light that you shine. I mean, you're a light worker in everything that you do. And um, we are so fortunate to have you talking to us this morning. So I'm, I'm sure the people, our audience is like, so how do you know, Laura? I mean, what, what, like why? Other than that you're amazing. We were just picking amazing people out of the trees. Um, in some year, five, six years ago, uh, your friend, Andrew Lippa, had written I Am Harvey Milk, an oratorio for us for the 35th anniversary, our 35th uh, anniversary concert and for Harvey Milk's um, anniversary as well. And he had written a soprano, a, a random, a random soprano in there. And as we were discussing this, um, he was like, well, we need to cast the soprano. And we're like, yeah, we do. And he goes, well, how about Laura Bonanti? And we fell out of our chairs. We're like, you know Laura Bonetti? And he was like, yes, I do. And then it just happened. And yeah. Andrew asked you, and you came out, and it was the first time that you, you know, I was like, I, I asked, like, how does it feel to have 300 men in, t in tails standing behind you? Okay, there's the question. How does that feel, Laura? You know, it's loaded for me because that was such a difficult time in my life. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, that was like during a very painful moment in my personal life. So what it felt like to me was, was very layered. A, I felt so honored to be a part of telling that story. So that's like the top layer. Then I felt the sound wave coming behind me of just the souls 
in yeah. everyone's voices. Like the soul in the voice is what I think is hard to properly capture for other people. You know, um, it's beyond like what you feel on Broadway. It's beyond what you feel when you're just like, you know, performing in a show. It's, it's people who their heart and soul is coming out of their mouth. So to have that wall of sound behind me and then to be experiencing all of the individuals who could see that I was suffering mm -hmm. and, and giving me love and compliments and making me feel like a million bucks when what I felt like was trash. It felt like hundreds of hands holding me up when I felt like I at any moment would crumble. Right. And I can't separate it. I can't separate the experience from that, you know? So for me, you know, your chorus will always be a part of my healing because I really feel like the universe sent me there, you know, that God was like, you know what you need? You need hundreds of gay men. Big hugs. Want nothing to do with hey, what you've got going on uh -uh. No, other than to tell you that they love you. And love your dress. And love your dress. Almost more than life itself. Yeah. And then and you say... Well, well, uh, what you just said, Laura, is, is really interesting because I think so many chorus members resonate with that very same notion. Um, when they come into the chorus, for whatever reason, you know, uh, some of them broken out of relationships or family situations, or they just look for community. But it's that same feeling of having hundreds of hands holding them up. I don't think I've heard anyone ever explain it more beautifully than you have. So I'm going to thank you on behalf of all 300 singers for that. Thank you so much. I really mean it. And, you know, I know because of my Uncle Bob's experience that it saves people's lives. Yeah. You true. know, it's not just, you know, people going to work and singing. It's saving people's lives. And it, it saved mine. And then you get to come back yeah. and do Broadway when life had changed for you and you were oh, on it. You were just, well, you were in Harvey Milk too, which in Harvey Milk, getting to sing, look before you leap, Oh my goodness gracious, the most brilliant texts and, so and, and music that Andrew said, which are just perfect for you. I hope you still sing that. You should still sing that. I, yeah, I, you know what? I haven't sung it since and I need to. I don't and know it could why. Be, it could be in your in your rap because it's just so uh, just call but I up. I think without you guys, it's like. Call up Andrew and say, uh, write this out for me as a solo. Yeah. So we, um, you know, we just feel like family and that's because you uh, have helped us continue that feeling. It's and then, I mean, ending my concert at Feinstein's with you guys. Yes. You know, when we was, joined. Yeah. That was like, meant so much to me. Well, but next time we get to see Ella. Yeah. yeah she's, next. she's like, you know, wants to sing more than anything. Yeah, well, he needs to come along. And, and then if Patrick has grown his facial hair back, we'll accept him. Yes. But um, if not, maybe not. Maybe no. he stays home stays with home. your parents. And yeah. just, well, just grows it out. Just let him know that face, yeah. some facial hair is... It's necessary. For the gays. I agree. I for, agree. The, for the straights, <laughs> too. This, this, this straighty wants a beard. I mean, <laughs> tell us exactly what you're doing next. Like today or? No, we know what you're doing today. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm releasing my album. Yes, April 10th. Um, yeah, April April 10th is a single and in June is the album. Okay. Um, my friend Kate and I wrote a, a board book for moms called M is for Mama and also Merlot. And that will yes. be avail available for pre-order April 1st. It's a great Mother's Day gift. Great. A great baby shower gift. Um. <laughs> And then I was meant to do a TV pilot, so that's indefinitely postponed. I was meant to go back to Younger, but that's indefinitely postponed. Um, so there's a bunch of like TV movie stuff that I'm just like waiting to see what happens with yeah. that. So and then and, and then my concerts. So like, who knows? Life is on hold, and yeah. you know, for me, this has been a real mindfulness practice where I'm like, I'm just here right now today, and I'm talking to you, and that's all I know. Yeah, that's uh, it's exactly where we are in that we've canceled everything. We may get to give a concert in September, 
And right. for us, uh, you know, we, we do uh, educational outreach in high schools yeah. and middle schools all the time, all of it canceled. We're doing, we do uh, benefits all the time, including our own concerts and to all like 50 a year. And all yeah. of a sudden our lifeblood, uh, yours and ours has just been ripped out from underneath us. There's, it's all gone. Um, last night we had Zoom with 152 singers, <laughs> meaning half of them stayed home or, or sheltered without listening to me, which right. I don't know, but 152 tuned in and um, it's different, but it yeah. is our, it's our new normal for the while. You know what's interesting? I feel like before all this happened, we were all like technology, just always on our phones, not really looking at each other, having, you know, there, there seems to be this part of dinner now where everyone's like, okay, this is the moment yeah. where we all look at our phones. Right. I think the good news is we're learning. We actually don't want to live in a hundred percent technological world. Mm -hmm. We do want to look at each other. We do want to be face to face. And I'm hoping that when, all, when we get through this, and I believe that we will, that we come out the other side looking for more interpersonal connection. That's my hope. Absolutely. I think we're so hungry for it now. We took yes. it so for granted yes. uh, that it was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is the way it's going to be. Yeah. And, uh, and then all of a sudden it's gone. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it, yeah. It's also, I think, using it uh, more intentionally. 100%. That's the perfect as a, word. As opposed to just being on the phone, to be able to, to, to intentionally go, I'm going to call my family and I'm going to be present with them. Yes. You know, yes. that, that is so important. And I also just want to uh, uh, thank you for mentioning the gratitude journal because yeah. that has really, you know, I have focused on this over the last month in the yeah. mornings and in the evenings and being mindful. And like you said earlier, uh, wouldn't it be wonderful to, to, to come out of this on the other side in a month or two months? And all of us have taken just a moment to be more mindful uh, of ourselves, um, of each other, uh, to be more grateful. What world will we wake up in then? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, it's so funny. It's interesting, like having a little girl where I say simple things to her, like, well, Ella, you have to treat people the way you want them to treat you. And just thinking about how many grown ups don't do that, you mm -hmm. know? And I, I, I really, it is really my prayer that we start to do that more and more. Uh, your, your lips to God's ears. <laughs> That's just thank you. It's beautiful. I cannot, we, but I specifically can't thank you enough. Um, the, the gratitude that we have for all that you do, not for us, but for the world is overwhelming. It's so much. And the fact that, that you really spend every day making the world better, whether it's as the mom with Merlot or, or, or saving kids' lives on the border, it's, it's remarkable. Your life is lived as a model for all of us. And to get to start our TV series with you, um, oh boy, you set the bar really, really high. Thank you. Really my honor, it's my honor. I love you guys so, so much. And I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you. thank yeah. you so much. Love you. Love you. Bye. Love you. I know that this is a time where Everybody's finances are feeling a little unsure. And so asking for donations can be a little bit tricky. That said, organizations like this one need us now more than ever. Whatever you can contribute, you can press that little donate button. If it's a dollar, if it's $50, whatever you think you can do to not only support this chorus, but the outreach, the community outreach, the outreach into schools. You never know that that one kid whose life is going to be saved by seeing themselves reflected um, and to see that there is a future beyond what they might be feeling in this moment. If you feel you can donate, I would be so grateful. The button is down here somewhere. Thank you.